Hi, Jessica. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Okay. Awesome. Sweet. All right. Um, to anyone who's watching, this is episode six of our SSI live stream interview series. And uh, I'm here with Cheska Ledesma, who's one of my fellow interns. I'm Clarissa Lamb. I am the host and the science communications intern for the Summer Systematics Institute run by the Cal Academy. And Cheska is a science intern for the summer uh, studying nudibranchs. Mm -hmm. So Cheska, do you uh, want to introduce yourself a little? And I can pull up your, spread or your slideshow. Yeah. Sweet. Let's see. All right. Um, hi, I'm Cheska Ledesma, um, and just a little bit about me. Um, I go by she, her pronouns. I'm from Manila in the Philippines, um, and one of, well, I think the only international student in the SSI program. Um, but I study at Wisconsin um, in Lawrence University, and I'm working on nudibranch phylogenetics with Terry Gosliner, Rebecca Johnson, and Lynn Bonamel. Sweet. And maybe for a few people out there, but could you say what phylogenetics is? Oh, yeah. So phylogenetics is basically um, the study of just how species are kind of like related to each other. So when I'm working on nudibranch phylogenetics, I'm working with the genus Kedlina. Um, and nudibranchs, by the way, are sea slugs, for those who don't know. Um, but I'm kind of looking at how um, sea slugs are related to each other sea slugs in this genus, so like different species and some new species um, that was just found off the coast of South Africa. Awesome. And then do you want to talk a bit about how you got into marine biology and science in general? Yeah. So um, I grew up in the Philippines, as I said, um, and I kind of grew up around a lot of nature and water. Um, and scuba diving is kind of how I fell in love with the ocean. So I started scuba diving when I was about 14 years old um, with a couple of my friends. Um, and it's been a really fun adventure. I still scuba dive a lot to this day and it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, and yeah, this these pictures are just um, me at home. The one um, on the left is me in Bonaire, one with me and my thumbs up with a little moray eel on the side. Um, and the one with the turtle is me back home. Um, and there are a couple of other pictures of me scuba diving. But yeah, that's kind of how I fell in love with like the ocean and started getting into science. Um, I gained kind of like a curiosity for everything water, ocean related, um, and just nature in general. Um, I also used to work at Denhugan Island, which is a little island in the Philippines, um, very small. It's a marine and wildlife um, habitat, um, yeah, preserved area um, in the Philippines. And um, they try to keep it very, um, I guess, like pristine, um, not a lot of humans kind of going in the area. Um, they have like these wildlife camps every summer, um, but there aren't any like resorts in the area. They use very little electricity. It's mostly solar powered. Um, they have like compost toilets and stuff. And that's kind of where I learned like how to care for the earth and just like how I gained a passion for conservation. Um, and I used to go to the marine camps there and then I worked there after a while. So that was um, a really big part of my science journey growing up. And lastly, also working with C Institute, our science education and advocacy institute in the Philippines, which is a conservation organization. Um, and these are crown of thorns starfish um, that I worked with. Um, there's an over overpopulation of them right now in the Philippines. And so I kind of worked with mitigating those effects since they kind of devastate coral reefs because they eat coral. Um, so those are just like the couple of things that I grew up with and that um, really fueled my passion for the environment and for marine conservation. Nice. And then what about the research you're doing this summer? Yeah. So um, the research I'm doing this summer, I was really excited to join SSI um, for many reasons. I love working in the lab. Um, so that's one thing. Um, and I really love life sciences, like I was saying. So um, anything related to just nature and the ocean. And so working with nudibranchs was something I was really excited about. 
Terry Gosliner also works in the Philippines a lot of the time. And so a lot of his samples from the collections are from the Philippines. And that was really exciting to me. I really wanted to form new connections with different people. And I loved that there was such a diverse group, not just in SSI, but also in the academy. They were really trying to um, make the academy and just make the space very diverse and very open to people of many different backgrounds. And so I was really excited about that because that's something I'm very passionate about. Um, and yeah, I also just haven't ever really done like molecular biology work before. And so I wanted a new experience and this felt like the right path. Um, and I just, I love nudibranchs. I scuba dived in the Philippines, I mean, I scuba, scuba dove, <laughs> I, I don't know. But in the Philippines growing up, I would see a lot of nudibranchs and these are basically little sea slugs and they have all these different colors and they're so pretty. And so I grew up around them, but I never really knew too much about them. And so I was really interested in kind of learning to um, just learning about them and learning um, why they're important because I see them so much in coral reefs. Um, and I did kind of learn a little bit that I'm gonna share. Um, basically, nudibranchs are really cool because they have a lot of like chemical defenses. Um, which they get from um, what they feed on. So depending on what they eat, they have different colors and also different chemical defenses because they can get like stingers and venom from what they eat. Um, and that's really cool. And they're very great models for like convergent evolution because um, they're kind of divided into these color groups, but not all species in a genus have like the same color. And even in like a certain species, they don't always have the same color. So they can they can be the same species and have different colors. And that's kind of like a marker for just like convergent evolution or selective pressure in different areas. So sometimes if nudibranchs are kind of in the same area, um, they might have the same coloration. And um, a lot of the time it's kind of just warding off predators and saying that they're poisonous. Um, and then other nudibranchs that aren't poisonous will kind of mimic these poisonous nudibranchs so that predators don't prey on them. Um, and yeah, it also is a great marker for biodiversity in coral reefs. Um, if you have a lot of like these different color groups and a lot of these species, um, it's a great marker and also kind of indicator of ocean conditions because they eat many different things. So you can kind of tell um, what's in the ocean or um, what's growing based on what nudibranchs are found in the waters. So what yeah. are some of the things that they eat? Um, so they eat a lot of things. Some of them eat jellyfish, some of them eat coral, anemones, um, some of them eat algae, sponges, hydroids, so a variety of things, which is why when you have like a lot of different nudibranchs in an area, you can kind of tell that um, the area is like healthy because then they're like, you know that there's a bunch of different food there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And then I know that you know not you've done all this work in the Philippines, but you've also studied abroad in Bonaire, and you've done field work in Wisconsin. Just you know, how do you compare all of the different places that you've been able to study, um, and what's that like? <laughs> yeah, um, so I have done field work in many different places. Um, I've done it in Tingloy, Batangas, in the Philippines, and that was with um, Sea Institute, and I've. Um, worked in other places in the Philippines, but that's just one of the areas. And um, in Appleton, obviously, since I go to school there, I've done a lot of field work for classes. Um, and recently, I also went to Bonaire um, in the Caribbean Netherlands. Um, and I also kind of studied like coral diversity there. So they all vary with just I mean, one thing I'm really passionate about is just learning about different environments because I feel like there's always something that you can learn from the environment, especially when you travel to different areas um, because every environment is different. Even if like the Philippines and Bonaire have a very similar climate, very tropical areas, they still have many species that like vary and that differ. So I love learning about that. I love learning about new species in the area and just how the ecosystems work and how they differ from like other tropical areas and stuff like that. Um, island ecosystems especially are just really interesting to kind of learn about. Um, and then going to school in Wisconsin, I learned a lot about kind of like freshwater lakes, which I wasn't um, 
I, I hadn't really like studied freshwater lakes before and I wasn't really exposed to it growing up. So that was also really exciting. And so just learning about all these different environments was really cool. Um, and I think um, one difference is like in Batangas and in the Caribbean Netherlands, um, you can kind of see that, I mean, these are island areas and areas that have been colonized previously. And so you can kind of see now that there are a lot of locals or a lot of um, just like organizations that are trying to recruit locals to really um, participate in just like conservation efforts. And you can see that the locals are very passionate about just like conservation efforts and a lot of the research is focused around conserving these areas, especially since islands are very um, prone to just side effects of like climate change um, and just negative effects of climate change um, as compared to like other kind of like landlocked areas like Wisconsin. Yeah, definitely. That's pretty, pretty different. Why did you, um, why did you choose a school that's, you know, not on a coast or not um, and like that? Yeah, that was one of the harder choices I made definitely because um, I've always wanted to kind of go to school by the beach, but I also kind of wanted a change of pace. Like I said, I'm really interested in just like gaining new experiences and really just like kind of widening my horizons and learning new things. And I think science is really about learning new things and kind of like a, a change in environment and just like, I don't know, I guess I was just very curious about Wisconsin and just that area of the United States because I had never really been to the Midwest before. And so that was something that drove me definitely. Um, and it was also about like the school mainly. So yeah. <laughs> nice. And then what are your plans for the future? You know, after yeah. this summer ends, after SSI is done in a week and a half or two weeks. <laughs> That's a hard question. Um, I've definitely thought about a lot of things when it comes to the future. Like I said, I'm very, um, I, I like learning a lot and I like, I'm always curious about just like what's out there and what more I can get and what more I can learn from the environment. So um, I thought about doing a master's program and I was very iffy about it before coming to SSI, um, but kind of learning from a lot of the master's students or like um, people who have done master's programs. Um, I've heard lots of good things and I've seen how it's helped them just learn more about the fields that they're interested in. And so that's something that I really wanna do. Um, and just kind of doing work, different projects um, on topics that interest me like coral reef and ocean conservation and island ecosystems, projects that kind of root me to home, but also just allow me to kind of explore different areas and different places. Um, I love like just comparing other places to home and how ecosystems differ across the world. Um, and so that's definitely something that I'm interested in. Um, and decolonizing and diversifying science as um, a woman of color in science, um, it's kind of hard to find representation sometimes. And so that's something that I want to work on in the future. And hopefully I can get like a platform or just a way to kind of um, bring in more people of color um, and just people who have been underrepresented in science, queer people and indigenous people. Um, indigenous science is something that I have been kind of learning about and want to learn more about. And so that's something I also want to focus on because I think that's also something that is kind of brushed under the rug when it comes to science since a lot of it is very westernized. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's awesome, Shazka. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, any any last information you want us to know or? Um, nothing really, but thank you for your time and thank you for listening to anyone who's listening now or after. Um, and if you have any questions about anything, you can direct questions to my work or a personal email. Um, and I attach my Instagram too, if you wanted to see my journey in SSI. So yeah. And some new to brand pictures. <laughs> yes, some new to brand pictures. I do have some of those. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Cheska. And you know, I'll see you shortly. But yeah. yeah. Bye. Thank you.